Blog Talk Radio. Out at Foggy Midfield. It's luck. 
there, there's a lot of luck in that. Um, what pick do you have? Who you know where? Uh, you know who, who's going to be in front of you? Um, maybe you might get the get that uh, get the player that you've been looking at for a couple rounds. Um, the the strategy with that is that okay, I might have to reach here, or you just have to know that you have to know if you need to reach for this player right here, or um, if you'll be able to wait for uh, wait a little bit late, wait a little bit later. In that essence, you have to know your league. You have to know the, the owners in your league. You have to know the the, the numbers, the um, the scoring system, to see if one of your sleepers is going to be um, a, be a target on somebody else's radar too. You just have to know that kind of stuff for snake drafts. Um, but with auction, um, it, it just takes more more skill because of managing that budget. Um, you can't go and spend. Uh, you know, almost all your money on one player because then you're sitting around for um, for a, for a long time and not and, and missing out on players that you can fill your roster with. So you have to come up with a strategy. Either you do go and spend big bucks on a on a superstar, or maybe you wait. I know uh, True's brother Vic. Well, he waits every year. Every year he's he's sitting there with the most cash. Um, in the, you know, <laughs> after like an hour or two uh, with in the draft, like he's always there with the most cash. Um, I think Antonio does that as well. Um, Yvonne's brother. Um, I, I've never really been a fan of that strategy. Um, it, it just doesn't seem to bring me in uh, the, the the plays that I would want. Um, but that is a strategy. I think auction is the most fair and uh, and the best form of draft though. Yeah, um, I definitely would prefer um, an auction draft over a snake because with an auction draft um, compared to a snake, every player is up for grabs because on a snake, you're going to have to go by the order. So if, you know, the, the if you're seventh in the, in the order in your, in your snake draft, there's no way you could – there's no way you're going to be able to select those top three running backs that you want. But for an auction draft, it doesn't even matter. It's, it's about are you willing to spend that money uh, for that certain individual? And that's why I like auction. And with auction, is it's, it's important that you have to be there for the draft also. For a snake, you could miss the draft and – you know, it'll auto select you a decent team with with an auction draft. Um, it, you could be in huge trouble if you do actually miss a draft. And it's all and it's all about and it's all about strategizing. And and it's a chess game. You 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 look at certain individuals of what their moves going to be, so you can make that next move also. So there's many strategies you could go into an auction draft compared to a to a snake draft, and that's why I prefer an auction draft because, um, like I said, every player is up for grabs. It doesn't even matter about the order. So I I, I definitely like auction drafts. I've been doing it for the last uh, um, the last seven years, and um, I do I do uh, take part of snake drafts, but um, Auction draft is definitely uh, crucial for me. The only thing that I hate about um, uh, an auction draft is it just takes too damn long, three to four hours. But I feel, like, but I feel like it's worth it. But some people do complain about it, but I don't mind because um, I know I know some people like me, True, uh, Mike. Uh, we stay all the way to the end. We stay all the way to the very last dollar. But there's some people just they just select who they want and they're out. But I prefer auction drafts, though. I think you hit it on the on the nail real quick um, on a, on the, on the point where you say that in an auction draft, everybody's available to you. Everybody. Absolutely, and that and that and that's what I'm gonna start with. Um, okay, so if you're new to fantasy, because the guy that asked me about this, he's fairly new to fantasy. Um, I would tell him. You know, if it was me, I would just want you just to throw me into the, the water, so to speak. I want to play an auction draft because I do think auction is more fair, definitely more fair 
for what Kiel just said. You actually have a shot at anybody that you want. It's not like the luck of the draw. I got the first pick, so I got Saquon Barkley, who's on a lot of people's number one pick. Um, if you don't have that number one pick, there's a good chance you're not getting Saquon. Well, you're not. I don't have to say it's a good chance. You're not getting Saquon Barkley or Alvin Kamara. If you don't have a high pick, you're not getting Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, or um, Christian McCaffrey. They'll be gone. But in auction, you can get any player that you want. That's what makes it better. Is it longer? Yes. But if you're a true fantasy nut like I am, I'm like, like you said, I'm waiting. Until, I'm not getting out of that draft until I draft every single one of my players. And to me, that's very key to fantasy and having success in fantasy because you can literally take a sleeper with your very last pick, and it can mean something. It might not mean that in that first game, but by week 12, it could mean so, so much. I've seen people take Alvin Kamara late in the draft his rookie season, and it turned out to be a great thing. You know, every year there's sleepers. So I would definitely tell anybody that's out there, don't just pick your starting lineup and think to yourself, oh, that's good. Nah, get, go all the way through the draft regardless if it's snake or auction. Now, I will say this for all my snake people out there. I don't mind snake if the draft is live. And I'm not a snake guy, but if it's a live draft and we're in person, everybody's there, I'm okay with a snake draft. Um, it's quick, especially if you're at a um, restaurant and you're eating with your friends. You know, snake is cool with me. Outside of that, it got to be auction all the way. I'm through it through auction. And I think that's really when you become a real pro at fantasy when you are trying auction instead of snake. All right. Here's another debate my man was asking. That's a debate. Another question my man asked me, what site do y'all like to come? Not what site that MBS League is on, because we know that. But there's so many sites that people play fantasy football on. A lot of people like Yahoo. A lot of people like NFL.com. A lot of people like ESPN. That's more the popular one. Is there a site that I'm not naming that you guys may like? But what's your favorite? I think that those three are the ones that, I played on and most people play on, but which, which, which one do you guys like and why? Yes, fans, where I go to uh, is my go-to. Um, Yahoo, I messed with for a couple of years. Um, didn't really like it at all. That's, I think that's my least favorite. NFL.com is pretty simple. Um, I haven't seen the update yet, but uh, um, ESPN's ESPN's best one, and it and they have a new update that. Uh, did things uh, did, did, uh, and made things a little bit better on the app. Okay, we find, we got Mike back on. So, Mike, go ahead and continue uh, where you left off before you got cut off. I was pretty much finished anyway. Like like I said, Yahoo um, didn't really didn't really love that league. A um, little different, um, especially with the with, with just with the way they have things set up. It's all preference. I can't really explain it. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not real good at explaining a visual type thing like that. Um, but Yahoo and NFL are a little bit different, and uh, and, I, and I haven't, I, like I said, I haven't seen the NFL.com fantasy app. I know that got updated. ESPN app got updated, and that's a, and that made it a lot better in my opinion. Um, it just made another step. Uh, I roll with ESPN. 
Cause, so when I when I started off with fantasy football, I originally started with Yahoo. Um, um, yeah. Then uh, once once I finally, um, you know, we we uh, I linked up with X, and then we formed, you know, the MBS brand. That's when we jumped to ESPN. Um, and I definitely prefer ESPN over uh, Yahoo. Um, I don't know. It's like like Mike said. It's basically off of preference what you like. I like I like Yahoo because they give you the you you know how you did on the drafts. Like if you lost or not, then they will give you like a little report on it. Um, that's 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 what I like about Yahoo. I think ESPN they're making some improvements and adjustments. I like what they added with the um, you know the, your uh, projections after the draft where you rank that. Uh, after the draft and where you're currently ranked now. Um, I like that also. Um, I think CBS is um, it's nice also. CBS, I think it's – CBS is really made for, like, um, like dy- dynasty leagues, keeper leagues. I think that's what uh, CBS is known for. Um, um, they got they – got, it's basically the same thing like Yahoo, but I think CBS is just more advanced. But – if you're asking me somebody to that starting off with fantasy, I prefer ESPN because ESPN is just easy, easy to use and it ain't hard and the app um, works really well. And mostly, a lot of people I know that plays fan fantasy football, even fantasy basketball, do use ESPN. So I prefer ESPN, but. Like I like um like I said, it's based off of preference. What you like, ESPN, Yahoo, CBS, uh, NFL. dot com. Um, I I don't think any of them you could go wrong with that. Okay, okay. Um, uh, for me, it, I'm like Mike. It's not even close for me. ESPN all the way. The updates are actually crazy. I I, I love the updates on certain aspects. One thing I don't like that ESPN did this year, um, that they did that they didn't have in prior years, is the home page. I, I like the old home page better on the league than the, the new one. I do like that they added the final predictions and they 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 updated as far as who they think has the best draft, who they think is actually going to be winning the, the, the league. If they look at it right now, before trades happen, before waiver wire pickups happen, um, I do like that aspect. But ESPN to me overall, just going to pick up a plan of the waivers. The format is cleaner, clearer, more precise. Um, overall, just the experience in uh, ESPN. It's like really don't have no that many glitches. I've seen in Yahoo a lot of glitches where they get the scoring system wrong many times. One day you think that you won the league or you won a game, you come back the very next day and you lost the game because they messed up on the scoring system. It's happened in ESPN as well. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but it seems to happen more on Yahoo's end. Um, a lot of people like this trade. Now, I'm not saying it's bad, and you could even set it up like that on ESPN, but Yahoo automatically sets up where you don't just score like, 100 fantasy points. It's like 100.1. Or um, it'll be like 100.3 or 4, depending on how much yardage they got or whatnot. ESPN is just basically 100 points. I like that about ESPN. Me. Some people say, well, if you do it the other way like Yahoo does, you're not going to have no time. Me, I don't care about no time. That's, that, that's very – Tell them that you get a tie in fantasy football. I don't say it never happened. Of course it happened. But for the most part, it doesn't happen. So if you're trying to set up the best possible league, um, and I'm going to let the guys get their insight real quick. If to me, you try to set up the best possible league in, league in fantasy, you're going to go auction, you're going to go ESPN, and you're going to go, for me, I like more deeper leagues, but I think 14 is a really good number. Well, you gotta know what you know. You gotta know what you're doing, but yet everybody doesn't have a stack team. And then 16 and all of them, you really gotta know what you're doing. And the teams are very thin. So I think 14 is that magic number with ESPN and an auction draft. That's the best possible setup you can have for a fantasy league. What you guys think? 
I like 12 teams. Okay. Um, I've never played a 14 team league. For some reason, everybody always makes a joke from 10, 12, to 16. There's no 14 for me. Um, just never ended up on that. Probably because of the odd, you know, you divide it by two yeah. mm-hmm. odd number standings, that kind of thing. Um, but I definitely prefer 12 team leagues. 10 team leagues. I, I only like one of those because it's a it's a different kind of league that I'm in. It's probably my most difficult league. Um, this league, you have three starting running backs, um, four wide receivers slash tight end spots. Um, so no tight end position. It's wide receiver slash or tight end for those slots. Um, so three starting running backs, four wide receivers slash tight end spots. Um, and, and that's a 10-team league, no trades. Um, it's a uh, it's a it's a difficult league, half PPR, and also ten points per rushing touchdown. Ten points per rushing touchdown. So running back, yeah, running backs are extremely valuable. Um, that like I mean, three starting running backs, three starting running backs. First of all, that's what you have to find, and also ten points per rushing touchdown. So that makes I mean first. Uh, you know, usually 80% of the first, in the, of uh, the picks on the first round are running backs. Um, you know, six to six to eight of the of the, of the first round picks are running backs. Uh, Julio, like guys like Julio, Odell, um, DeAndre Hopkins, they they can be found in the second round. Um, like, you know, sometimes even in the middle of the second round because of how valuable running backs are. Um, half PPR as well. So wide receivers and tight ends, uh, they're devalued. Guys like James White and uh, Tariq Cohen, they're a little bit devalued because they don't have touchdown value um, and it's only half PPR. Um, yeah, this is a, it's an interesting league and that's why, and that's why it's better. If it was a 12 team league, it would be impossible. It would be, it would be awful. Uh, but 10, team, 10 teams is right. Um, so for a league, a specialty league like that, if you have a specialty roster or something like that, um, maybe 10 team is the way to go. But I think the standard 12 team league is the most uh, is the is the best um, to go with. Oh, and I, I'm glad Mike brought that up before Kill goes. Um, I want to add to that. I said 14, which I I've been a few a few leagues like that, but um, I like standard flex option, no op. Now that that's my preference, I like the regular quarterbacks, two running backs, two receivers, tight end, flex, and um, I don't even mind a defensive player. One defensive player is cool with me. Defense and a kicker, I'm with that. I think that's the best scenario that you can have. But you have to have IR people. I hate playing league. Yes. There's no IR. You have I'm, to have an IR. I I failed. <laughs> I failed in our league because I didn't put in IR slots. I don't know if you saw that. Um, oh, I didn't see it, but I hate it. Oh my god! I'm so, yeah, <laughs> it's the it's. I, I was I was kind of doing that at the draft. I'm like, no way, I can't do it. Um, I, I'll have to I'll have to tinker with it, see if I can fix that. Um, possibly, uh, like delete the whole draft and then add all the players back. If if it's that big of a deal to everybody, I think it's a big deal. So. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what's up with that. But yeah, no IR slots, slots in the NBA snake league. I prefer a sixteen team league. Um, I like sixteen teams leagues. Um, I just feel like it's more competitive. It makes you actually think more, and um, and and. With the competition out there, man, it's 16 teams. And, you know, with 12 teams, you know, everybody's going to have a decent team. Um, with 16 teams, that's not that's not an automatic that everybody's going to have a decent team. Um, I definitely wouldn't prefer no 10-team no leagues. Um, I actually do have a 10-team league, and that, that's because um, – it was a live draft, and I I just felt like I, I just wanted that live draft experience. So that's the only ten team league. And with a ten team league, you know everybody's gonna have a good team, and everybody has you know 
a really great chance of um, of, of going that far. Uh, with with a twelve team, it's like the most popular, most popular and most common thing when it comes to fantasy owners. If you took a vote right now, they'll they'll probably say twelve teams. But I definitely prefer a sixteen team with like uh, with the flex position. Definitely, um, I know some leagues they play they do play OP. Um, one thing, if you ever uh, try to do a league with OPs, just make sure it's not 14 or 16 teams. Because if it does, there's going to be some teams not going to be able to get even two quarterbacks. Because, uh, you know, there's some people out there uh, in leagues like that that are, that, are, that are so greedy. They'll draft all the quarterbacks and they'll use them as trade bait, knowing that the other team is so desperate. Because I've... Um, I experienced that because True did that to me one time. So um, I'll just leave it at that. But I definitely prefer 16 teams league. Um, flex position uh, is the most common for me. Man, that's that's any 16 team league though. People will be hoarding quarterbacks. Yeah, and that, and that, and that's what I want to get to um, before we go to our, our, our main topics as far as players and whatnot. So shout out to my man that asked me that question. Oh, God, I, I, I forgot his – man, what's his first name? Mr. Bowles, I forgot your name, Bowles, man. Um, he actually used to work at my school. He actually reached out to me and was like, dude, I checked out your stuff on YouTube. I just really need help with this stuff. So shout out to you, man. I hope he helped you out. Um, it always matters. Look at your rule settings. Look at everything. Because some leagues, quarterback score four when they throw a touchdown. Some is six. I know the MBS league is six. Mike just told you, 10, to, 10 points for a rushing touchdown. You better look at those things when you're going to draft. Or, and let me add just one more thing, PPR. If I play in your league, it got to be PPR. I don't play that nonsense. It got to be PPR for me. I don't like non-PPR leagues, but that's just me. So, Mr. Bowles, I hope I helped you out, brother. Because um, I know you're going to tune into the YouTube channel to listen to this show. So, there, there you have it. All right, guys. You always ask more questions. Always, uh, we're always open to more questions. We we know you. We know you're gonna have more throughout this uh, fantasy season. So be sure to be sure to keep asking us questions, and we'll be answering them on this show. Definitely, definitely. All right, guys. This right now is the time preseason. We find out gems. We find people that can truly help us in fantasy. Who has impressed y'all in the preseason that now you're thinking about drafting them? because you've seen a couple of games from them, and now they're getting on your radar. And then who's some guys that, you know, you're like, you know what, maybe I thought they were going to be good or I thought they were going to be the starter. But you know what, I think I'm going to hold off on him in the draft. Give me some guys that you see in the preseason that you like right now and that you don't like. It's true. This is a terrible question because anybody that bases preseason off of that needs to go home. Um, I, uh, well, I'm going to tell you why. Like, <laughs> there's a there's a couple players. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Preseason does have some value regarding that. Um, the uh, the the player that I that I've had on my radar was James Washington. Um, been a big fan of him and uh, the targets that he might get coming up uh, with uh, with Antonio Brown gone. Um, Dante Moncrief has his competition at the wide receiver spot. Uh, the fact that the Steelers just draft wide receivers and develop them really well. Um, the, uh, um, the James Washington had a, had a really big first game. Um, didn't see what he did last, yesterday. Um, I, I missed out on him, seeing him and Mason Rudolph. Um, I'd have to look at that, but I was very impressed with the first game. He made a really nice, uh, over the shoulder catch. Um, uh, Mason Rudolph threw it nice as well. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to James Washington. Uh, player that was on my radar um i would say um at the i mean we haven't seen much of the raiders uh offense itself but josh jacobs is not a guy that i want on my radar there's they're using all three running backs jalen Rashard, deandre washington they all look good um and uh, josh jacobs i mean he hasn't I haven't seen him have a have a, have a huge role uh, yet. Obviously, like I said, it's preseason. You can't really judge it 
judge that. I just haven't been impressed. That's all. Okay. Okay. And we'll definitely talk about that in a second. I'm going to just give you a heads up. We'll talk about that in a second. But, Kia, go ahead. Um, a player that, um, that I, that I do, um, that I do have on the, um, the radar is, um, you, you look at, um, what's his name? I think he goes by Darwin Thompson from the, uh, from the Chiefs. I I know he's uh he's undersized but I he fits really well in that system that Kansas City runs and um I think he could I know he's he's fighting between uh as a backup with uh right now uh, Carlos Hyde but I think he possibly possibly could actually share the load with um with somebody like uh um with uh with Damian Williams also so um I definitely like him. Uh, one player that I uh, also like is um, what's his name from the Colts? Oh, Devin Funches. Devin Funches. I think he would be great for possibly at a flex position right now. So, uh, uh, Darwin. Uh, I mean, uh, um, Devin Funches. And the last guy, I know he hasn't played, but I'm. I know for a fact he's on people's radar. And uh, his draft stock has actually went up now, and he hasn't even played. And I'm talking about Josh Gordon. He's already reinstated. So, um, yeah, so I, I could see a lot of people uh, keying in on him and going in on him. And you look at the Patriots wide receiving core, it's, it, it looks pretty good right now, man. Uh, you, got, uh, you got Julian Ed- Edelman there. You got uh, – Demarius Thomas, who's uh, you know uh, going through an injury right now, which I think he will be fine. Then you got Josh Gordon; he's already reinstated. I know I know True's not high on uh, the rookie Nikhil Harry, but um, I think New England got some nice receiving core, and they could be um, a really dangerous team. But I like Josh Gordon as far as uh, fantasy players right now. That stock has um, definitely risen. But and a stock that has gone down, which I would actually stay away from, is a uh, Deontay Foreman from um, from the Colts. They uh, he was a, he was actually recent recently acquired um, by the Colts. The Texans let him go. I think uh, his dra- his draft stock is actually um, is actually going to go down. So um, those are the guys that I think. Um, my guys that are high on and the ones that I'm low on. All right. Well, I'm going to start with the guy that I'm low on because Mike bought him up and I thought I was the only one. But Josh Jacobs. Oh, man. I actually drafted him in the first draft I was in with Kia in that Facebook Live league that he's there he's talking about. And I just don't see it. I don't see it. I want to see it. I think, he, you know, I like him at Alabama. And then you always got to think Alabama running back for the most part, not that they don't pan out, but they're just not as good as they were when they were at Alabama. So, Josh Jacobs is somebody I was really high on coming out of Alabama, and now I'm kind of, you know, taking my steps back and like, nah, I don't know about that so much. Now, here's a guy that I'm not going to say I'm high on, but at one point I was not even going to draft him. Like, it wasn't even, like, on my mind to draft this guy. And – I hate going off of, like Mike said, the preseason, but I remember watching Victor Cruz in the preseason and saying to myself, oh, this guy's going to be a stud. Victor Cruz is going to be a stud. So you got to pay attention because you could get somebody in the back end that could turn out to be really good. But now I'm interested. I'm not going to say I would still draft him, but I think that I'm at least interested to see that maybe I could use him as a backup quarterback, and that's Lamar Jackson. I gave Lamar Jackson the hardest time on this show. But after watching him against the Packers and then Aaron Rodgers and him having a conversation about little detailed things, I, I'm I'm not – I may draft him on the back end. If I, if he goes for cheap in the NBA, a dollar, I'm with that. Anything more than that, no, I'm out still. But 
Lamar Jackson, somebody that actually impressed me against the Packers the other night. So I'm going to say he's the guy that, you know, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. All right. Well, since Keo brought it up, I'll wait for my, I'll wait for the topic I was going to because everybody's been asking me about this as well. Let's talk about the Josh Gordon situation. Josh Gordon has been reinstated by the NFL. I think that hurts a couple of the receiving court, like, like in the Cal Harry. Um, this could hurt his cause as far as moving forward. When you have Josh Gordon, Demarius Thomas is healthy, Julian Edelman, I think those are clearly the three starters. Um, what do y'all think about the Josh Gordon? Do you think he's draftable, or would you stay away from Josh Gordon? Let's start with Mike. Well, I've drafted I, – I actually drafted him in one league um, before he was reinstated, last pick of the draft. And then when I heard that he was reinstated, I was right on it. And thank God that I was looking at my phone while I was driving. Um, but I saw that news, and I went right to the NBS State uh, League and picked him up, dropped uh, Nikhil Harry. I wasn't completely sold on Nikhil Harry from the, from the jump because he's a rookie. And, and for a rookie to earn Tom Brady's trust and get a lot of targets – right from the jump in his first year, that would that would take an, a, a, a transcendent talent. And I don't think Nikhil here is that. It's not like he's he's not Julio Jones. He's, he's not the other Hopkins. Um, he would uh, – um, he, he, he wasn't – he's not – he's not going to jump in there as a freak, a freak of nature and just steal targets um, because he's, he's just not that type of – yeah, he, it's going to take a few games, um, maybe a whole, almost a whole season to earn the uh, trust of Tom Brady. So I wasn't super high on Nikhil Harry from jump. Thought he might be able to produce something later in the season. Um, <clears throat> Julian Edelman, uh, you know, he's still he's still Tom Brady's uh, slot guy. His um, he, he and James White, those are the those are his uh, his uh, dig and dunk guys. Um, and they'll get a lot of uh, YAC. But Josh Gordon was the man when Tom Brady and him were playing together. Josh Gordon was putting up numbers, um, averaged uh, 11, 11 uh, yards per uh, yards per attempt, I believe it was, um, when uh, when Tom Brady was averaging 11 yards per attempt when he was targeting Josh Gordon last season. Um, he uh, uh, Josh Gordon will put up numbers if he's on the field. He will be the number one guy. Um, he's just, he's just good. when I when I say transcendent talent, that that's Josh Gordon right there. He's ridiculous. Um, he, uh, I mean, he was the numbers that he was putting up with the Cleveland Browns, uh, with the quarterback situations that he was given, uh, with ty- guys like Tyrod Taylor throwing to him, um, and being coached by the likes of Hugh Jackson. Um, I don't remember who was before Hugh Jackson. Um, Josh Gordon was putting up numbers. He uh he had, he in his first three seasons he uh he was he's top five I know he's top five in his uh first three seasons of uh of total yards total receiving yards um, of all time. Um, so Josh Gordon will will be on my radar. He is being drafted in the middle rounds and he will put up the most numbers for any Patriots wide receiver. Did we ask you on the line? Yeah, sorry uh, about that. Um, okay. Yeah, jo- I, I, I like Josh Gordon, man. Um, when he was with the Patriots last season, before he left, he forty receptions, seven hundred twenty yards, three touchdowns. Um, I think he had around like sixty-eight targets. Um, I think, I think he's a viable option. Guys like Philip Dorsett, Cameron Meredith, uh, Nikhil Harry, those guys are all dealing with the injuries right now. And with Gronkowski no longer there, that makes him uh, a huge primary option. Even Julian Edelman right now is dealing with some injuries right now. And uh, I think Josh Gordon, this is a this is a win. This is a win for him. I think um, he just. 
I think he just needs to stay um, stay out of trouble, and um, I think he'll be fine, man. And I think he's going to make a huge impact. He already has the chemistry with Tom Brady already. I think you know he basically one of the most versatile versatile receivers out there, man. And um, I think Josh Josh Gordon is a really high pick. Um, <clears throat> um, are you asking me? If he's gonna be a wide receiver one on a on on the fantasy owners team, no, I'll take him a wide receiver two. I'll take him as a flex. Um, but um I think he's a he's a great option and like I said, I think his draft stock definitely um has gone up for this. And um and and I'm happy for him, man. Good to see Josh Josh Gordon back. All right. Anybody that's been tuning into this show or knows me knows that I've been the biggest Josh Garden fan since Cleveland. And I'm here to tell y'all, when I saw him get picked up, I never went to pick him up in any of my leagues, any of them. And Kia knows this. Mike knows that. I know I love Josh Garden. Everybody knows. Everybody shout out to my, everybody in my man Cubist League. They know how much I like Josh I've been drafting Josh Garden near Duke every year since he's been in Cleveland. I'm just done, man. At this point, man, I hope that it works out for him. I'm not, you know, I'm not here to bash him or anything like that. And it may work out for fantasy owners. Maybe I should have stuck around maybe one more year. But I just, it's too inconsistent, things that I just can't trust. You got somebody there like the, um, Demarius Thomas. Um, you got Nikhil Harris, who you spun that, that pick on. You got Julian Edelman. I just, I, I just, I just can't trust um, Josh Gordon. So for me, I'm staying away from him. Back in the day, I would have traded you for him, Mike. I would have traded, I would have wanted him on my team, but I just don't see the value that everybody else sees in him now. He's let so many fantasy owners down over the past few years. I'm completely staying away from him. Even if he's in the draft, I won't spend no money on him. If, if I did, which I won't, I'm telling you, I won't. It wouldn't be more than a dollar. And it would just solely be for trade bait purposes. It would not be for me because I want him on my team. And maybe. I just don't, I, what was that? Maybe, maybe you're saying that so we can <laughs> get them, and you could cap, and you could capitalize on the opportunity to get them and make us suffer. No, well, y'all just said y'all like it, so y'all mean y'all gonna draft him. Y'all not gonna listen to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I could have picked him up. I didn't want him in uh, no league. I'm not even talking about the leagues that me and Mikey, because I know Mike jumped on him quick. But I could have went get him in some other leagues, and I was like, no, I'm in eight leagues, and I'm like, no, I'm not getting that dude in any league. It's not worth it. It's not worth me dropping somebody that I can rely on to somebody I can't rely on. And we will just, see on September first. <laughs> we will see. Okay, so Mike brought it up earlier, and anybody that plays fantasy knows that running backs is probably, no matter what league you're in, running backs is probably the most valuable position. So this week, we already know, like I told you, the Saquon Barkley's of the world, the Alvin Kamara's of the world, the Christian McCaffrey's, the the Zeke Elliott when he's playing. But here's what I want to know, guys. I'm going to throw out a team. And I want you to tell the fantasy owners if they can grab one running back from that team, who should it be and why? Whether you think they're the starter now, whether you think they'll be the starter long term, but you think that that's the guy because fantasy owners know how to draft the girlies of the world and maybe I'm there. But when I get to a team, let me see, like the 49ers, do I believe in Tevin Coleman? Do I think it's Jaron McKinnon? Do I think it's Matt Breda? Breda? Who do y'all think? So we'll just go down the list, and you tell the people why and who should be the, the person that you want from this team. Y'all ready? Yes. Okay. We're going to start with the Kansas City Chiefs. Everybody's heard Damian Williams? Right. But they did get Carlos Hyde and he'll just tell you like Darwin Thompson. Who should be the running back that the Kansas City Chiefs should roll with in your eyes? Are you asking who? Are you asking, who, should, who, they, not who, who should I be drafting? Over. Yeah, who would you draft out of the guys that, that's on there? I have no shares in Carlos Hyde. Um, <laughs> I think that guy is a very talented running back. 
He's always injured, though. Um, he's had fumbling issues, um, which is a no-go for uh, for uh, Andy Reid, although he, uh, he he did have LeSean McCoy, one of the uh, biggest fumblers out there. I've uh, I've heard conflicting reports about Damian Williams and uh, Carlos Hyde, who's the man right now. Who does Andy Reid like? Um, I don't know. I don't. Damian Williams hasn't gotten the vote of confidence in Andy Reid, and I'm afraid of his durability because he's never had a, a huge amount of carries. Um, but we know the durability of Carlos Hyde isn't there either. I think it might just be a timeshare eventually. Um, they uh, they might just split carries. I don't think either one of those guys is going to be a full workup force. Uh, but Damian Williams did get a contract, um, did get a signing uh, this uh, this year, um, or this uh, this off season with the vote of confidence from the from the Chiefs. Um, so I would think that he'd be more of the guy. Uh, but for both players, honestly, I'm staying away from them. I would love to if I if I knew who was the uh, who, who was the who was the man, then of course I want the Chiefs running back. But since I don't really know. Um, and I can only guess that it's Damian Williams right now. Uh, I'm staying away from them and have no shares in either one of those guys. Thank you. Um, out of those three guys, as of right now, I'm I'm rolling with uh, Damian Williams. Um, uh, he has, you know, he has shown that um, he um, he has the workload to prove. Um, especially when uh, Kareem Hunt uh, went out. And um, he put on some good, decent numbers while he was uh, – while um, while they didn't have Kareem Hunt. And I think he has a chance to prove himself that he could be in every down back, which I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Carlos Hyde is pretty much going to be eventually out of that picture. Um Darwin Thompson, I think he's gonna step in. And he's gonna um, he's gonna share uh, a good, nice workload with um, with Damian Williams. But right now, I see Damian Williams uh, right now, um, and um, he plays pretty well with Mahomes with that offense while Hunt was gone. So I'm rolling with Williams. Yeah, I'm I'm with y'all as far as I was right right now. If I'm gonna draft one, it's gonna be Damian Williams. But I'll tell you this: down the line, later on this year, if Damian Williams doesn't work out, I don't like Carlos Hyde or Darwin Thompson. I think it's gonna be Darryl Williams that ends up getting a starting job later on in the league year if Damian Williams doesn't work out for whatever reason. I will say this: the reason why I would go with Damian Williams as well is because the offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy. Like Damian Williams, he said Damian Williams was his guy. He's the one guy that came out and did give him a confidence. Andy Reid didn't do it, but Harry Benjamin did. So I'm gonna go with Damian Williams. If I had to draft one, I'm kind of like Mike in a sense. I probably would stay away from all of them because I just don't want to waste my draft pick. And I think Damian Williams would go really not say high, but he'll go you know top four rounds. I think, especially in a snake draft. And I just think that's too high for a guy that has a lot of uncertainty as far as if he's gonna be the guy the entire season. But he's the guy right now that you want to draft if you're going to draft for one of them. Okay, this is going to be a good one, I think, because I've seen it in myself. Um, keep on debating it. You can get one Patriots running back. Who is it? Oh, man. Uh, I've been struggling with this. I'm going to be honest. This, <laughs> this last week. I've been a huge fan of James White all season and his, uh, and his ADP because he's going in the – in the sixth round, he's going in the sixth, seventh round. Um, sometimes as early as the fifth, um, and I was loving that ADP because James White was a top ten running back last year in PPR formats, and nobody is dra- like no nobody seems to re- seems to remember that. So nobody seems to trust uh, the the Patriots and uh, and, and the running back committee, um, and the fact that James White will get will continue to get targets. Uh, I'll try and make it quick, but I, I do have a lot on this. James White will see his same amount of targets, I think. I've heard that so- Sony Michelle, um, Sony Michelle is uh, getting work in the play- in, in the passing game, which is uh, a little bit concerning. Um, and he's obviously going to get more uh, more more rushing attempts. 
He had 200 and uh, Sonny Michelle had 206, 208 last season. Uh, I think that if he's healthy, he, that that number is going to jump up to um, that that number will jump up to the 230, 240, 250 range. Um, if he gets hurt, Damian Harris will probably take more of that uh, uh, workhorse um, role and get uh, get those carries. So between Sony Michelle and Damian Harris, I think that those two guys will uh, combine for about um, will will combine for about 250 each, um, and then the rest goes to James White. He'll still get a bit about 100, 120 carries, um, as well as all that receiving work. Uh, Rob Gronkowski isn't there anymore, and those are targets for. Um, those are targets for James White um, and, and the running backs and Julian Edelman to take up. In my when when I talked about that three starting running back league, I think I'm going for Sony Michelle. I have both of those guys ranked like I think they're ranked 17th and 18th on my list on my running back list. And in that league, I'm taking I'm taking Sony Michelle because of that goal line work. That's what I need. Um, and uh, and James White won't get as many rushing rushing touchdowns as Sony Michelle, um, so I'm taking I'm taking uh, um, I'm taking Sony Michelle in that league. But in regular PPR formats, I'm taking James White for that safe RB two, uh, safe RB two work. So you telling so it's telling me if it's PPR type of league, I'm 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 rolling with James White. I'm staying away from Sony Michelle. One thing about the Patriots through the past seasons, um, as far as their running back goes, you don't know who's gonna be the the you know the guy that 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 workhorse for that game as far as the running back goes. There's there's has been you know. Numerous times in uh, games with, when the Patriots played, the where they had stars show up, different type of stars show up uh, for the running backs, from Danny Woodhead, Rex Burkhead to Brandon Bolden, Lawrence Maroney, um, and the list continues. And I just feel I I I, I this is a a risky. Uh, Pick for me to take Sony Michelle. Um, I I would prefer to stay away from him. But if there's one guy that I trust that I would go after, and you're talking about B- PPR type of leagues, I'm going with James White. He's proven it. He's proved it last season. He's proved it on the big stage, especially in the Super Bowl. And with Gron- Gronkowski's not there, um, I think. Brady is going to utilize uh, James White really well throughout the season, and I think he's going to be really huge in PPR type of leagues. I mean, he ain't no 15 to 20 carry type of back, but I I'll take him as a um, as as far as a fantasy perspective goes, and um, for PPR man. And um, I like James White. I think he could give me an average of 10 to 12 points um, every single game, and I'll be fine with 10 or 11. So um, I'm ro- I'm rolling with James White in this one. Okay. So for me, this is a, is a tricky question, like Mike said, because those guys are tremendous. I see that people think I'm Sammy and Harris is going to come in and get some touches because – they draft him and they, they, they are high on him. Let me just say this. If they have if they all ball down to and I had to take one of them out of James White and Sony Michelle, because Damon Harris is not in the picture to me. I don't see how people are even just throwing Sony Michelle under the bus like I don't trust them. If there was one sure guaranteed person that I trust in this situation, it is Sony Michelle. Okay. Why do I trust him so much? He was just brought up on the biggest stage with James White did. I don't think nothing from James White because, I mean, he caught 15 balls against the Chargers, I think, for like 94 yards and a touchdown. So, and he's a running back. So he always going to get touched on the backfield. That's awesome. And he's draftable. I'm not saying you don't draft him. But if I can draft one guy on the Patriots running back, on the Patriots backfield, it's only Michelle. Let me just throw these numbers out for y'all. In the three games, Last postseason, he played in three. Well, the Patriots had 
you know, the whole field of first, the field of first round, and they played the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Rams. Play all the Super Bowl. Tony Michelle, 336 rushing yards in those three games and six touchdowns. If the proof's not in the pudding that they're going to run this guy, I'm going to repeat that. 336 rushing yards and six touchdowns in all those games. He scored in every last one of those games. He scored three touchdowns against the Chargers, two against the um, Chiefs, and one against the Rams. And that's the only touchdown in the Rams game was from Sonny Michelle. Over 100 yards average, around 4.8 if you add up everything. So he's getting clearly four points. So there's five, over five and two of them, and then add four on one. So he's close to that five range. So I'm saying 4.8, 4.9. So I did the math. I didn't really do the math. That's incredible. On the biggest stage, Sony Michelle, I think, is being under undervalued in in, uh, in this draft. But if it's one guy I'm taking, I'm taking Sony Michelle. All right, let's move on. Now, that's another good one. I, I've heard both sides of the equation kind of similar to what we just talked about, the Bears situation. Who you drafted? That's tough, too. Nay, I like, I, I like <laughs> you see that you bring it up. <laughs> uh, as of right now, Tariq Cohen is uh, is above David Montgomery on my list. I've been told do not sleep on David Montgomery. Um, he's rising on my draft boards. I really want to see him in action um, and uh, uh, see what he what he's made of as a pass catcher. Matt Forte had good, had great things to say about David Montgomery, and that's really got me um, interested. I mean, the Bears, they're so good at dressing running backs. Um, even Josh Howard looked good for his, for his rookie season. Um, Jordan Howard, excuse me. Jordan Howard looked good for his rookie season. But, I mean, Matt, Matt Forte, Cedric Benson, um, who rest in peace, by the way, um, Tariq yeah. Cohen. Uh, I feel like, a, oh, uh, who, who am I missing? Uh, somebody else in the 2000s. Uh, that I'm missing at the, between that Matt Forte, you know, it, 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 either after or before the Matt Forte era. Um, uh, but the Bears are always good at drafting running backs, and uh, I'll, uh, I'm really, I'm really liking David Montgomery. Um, if I, depending on uh, what you know, what the where the picks are, uh, what round it is, I'm not going to reach for either one of those guys. Um, it looks like uh, Tariq Cohen's ADP is going a little bit more uh, towards where I like it, seventh and eighth round. Um, but if David Montgomery's falling that far, falls that far too, then I'll, I'll snatch him up instead of Tariq Cohen. Okay. Yeah. Um, David Montgomery, let's, let's put it out there. He ain't no sleeper. He's off that sleeper radar. <laughs> if anybody wants to know that. Because it's, it's a given fact I, in numerous fantasy leagues I've been in that David Montgomery, the more the more as we get close to uh, the more draft you you as you go, his his stock keeps on rising and he gets and he gets he's getting draft in these high rounds right now, and um, I still want to see what he can do on that. On that field still, um, so um, I mean, hopefully he turns out the way people are advertising him to be, and, and it's it is just sad, man. I feel bad for Tariq Cohen, man, because he had a solid and great year last season, and um, and you know he like I mean, true talked about you know people have forgotten about you know Sony Michelle and throwing him under the bus. What about Tariq Cohen, man? But if you ask me to choose, I'm I'm choosing Cohen as of right now, man, because um, he's showed it and proved it on the field, and um, and he's still and he's still a young a young player, and he has good upside. So I'm rolling with Tariq Cohen based off off what I was able to see last year and with the chemistry he had with Trubisky. So um, I'm going with Cohen over Montgomery. All right, well, it doesn't really, really know where I'm going with you. Do you feel it could be David Montgomery, hands down? I think he's going to win rookie of the year. He's going to get my Colin Murray. So, 
It's like, I mean, Cohen's cool. Another person like James White, I would definitely draft Tariq Cohen. I did draft Tariq Cohen in a, a few leagues. But if I could have one guy, I just think that time um, is just ridiculous. So I'm going with him. All right, guys. The Philadelphia Eagles. Who's going to be their guy? I'm hearing so many different things about the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't even know what to think. It's Miles Sanders, man. There's no way. Uh, there, there, there's no way that Jordan Howard is beating him out um, for for that job. The most, the most, um, the biggest thing that I'm, you know, that I, that I worry about is the timeshare the split carries. The Eagles are not. Um, they they are not. One Doug Peterson. He's not one to just give it to a bell cow um, and let him have a uh, let him have a uh, twenty carries. That's just not his his style. Um, but um, Miles Sanders is pretty dang good, um, and he could he he, he they, they're saying he's a three down back. So um, he's the guy that I'm looking at, and he's the only Eagles running back that I'm drafting. Yeah, I'm going with Miles Sanders also. Um, just remember, this was Saquon Barkley's replacement when Barkley left. And uh, his speed, his elusiveness, um, the way this guy could explode, explode uh, in um, in second gear, um, I, I like Miles Sanders, man. And especially with that, with, with these weapons that they have around, I and mean, he fits really well compared to Jordan Howard. So, um I'm going with Miles Sanders in this one, especially um, huge PPR uh, points. Um, somebody who's interested in Miles Sanders. Yeah, okay, so I disagree with both of you as far as this question is concerned. I disagree with everybody out there that's funny to draft anybody. I'm not drafting nobody off the Eagles team that plays running back. I don't trust none of them. Um, so me, you say he kept, he kept a lot of balls in the back. I don't even know about that. You still got Darren Sproles. You still got Wendell Small, who's mm-hmm. the offense better than both of those guys. Um, and I know the, the Peterson likes to get the ball to Sproles any way he can. I don't trust none of this. I'm not trying to draft none of these guys. But if I had to have one guy, I would actually go with Jordan Howard because I think he'll get the goal line touches because he's so big. But I'm not drafting any of them. I'm completely staying away from this team. Um, the quarterback is cool to draft. The tight end is cool to draft. Maybe a receiver or two. But the running back, y'all can draft them. In the NBA league, I promise you, I would not draft the Eagles running back. Okay, let's go to the 49ers. What's up, guys? I'm here a lot of Jerry McKinnon. Today. Jerry McKinnon okay. has never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever been on my radar. <laughs> never been on my radar. Okay, I'll say he was in my radar when he was with the Vikings and Adrian Peterson was hurt. That's the only time. And then it was, I mean, the guy couldn't beat out Toby Gerhardt and um, uh, uh, Matt Matt Asiata. Matt Asiata, Toby Gerhardt, oh, Jeremy McKinnon couldn't take the job from them when they, when when the Vikings job was open. Jim McKinnon's not that guy, and he's already been injured twice for 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 a uh, lengthy amount of uh, of the season. He was out. Uh, he's out all of last season. He's out eight games this season already. Um, that's that's twenty four. That's twenty four games right there already. Um, am I doing my math right? Um, I, there's no 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 confidence in Jerry McKinnon. Never gonna pick him up, draft him, trade for him, anything. Even if he's on the waivers, I'm not picking him up. Uh, it will come around that eighth week. Um, Kevin Coleman, I've always liked him with the Falcons, and uh, I'm and uh, I have shares in him. I like him, and uh, I would uh, um, I, w- I would draft him. That's the only one though. He's got RB two. He's got RB two flex um, projections. He'll probably get 15, 17 carries, something like that, um, throughout the season. Uh, Matt Burita, really fast guy, and he will, uh, um, and uh, he'll he'll steal a couple t- steal steal a couple carries. But Tevin Coleman, I think, will be the main uh, two to three down back. Um, it'll be between those two. I like Tevin Coleman. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Tevin Coleman, I'm going with that route also. Kyle Shanahan, uh, exactly. I'm familiar with him. Um, <laughs> um, Coleman's familiar with Shanahan, the way he he runs things there, especially that big year that Matt Ryan had. So um, I think Shanahan's going to utilize them the same way, but just a little bit more involved um, because uh, when he was there, he had Devontae Freeman. So I, I like Tevin Coleman and, and what he possibly could do. Um, I think this guy's stock can possibly rise up in drafts moving forward. As of right now, he's he's like the last few running backs that people uh, are are starting to select. As far as starters goes, so um, I'm going with Tevin Coleman in this one. Uh, a huge in PPR also. No, I agree with everything both of y'all said. I don't have to even continue. Tevin Coleman, hands down. All right. I don't even know why that's even a question. Somebody asked me about that, so I just wanted to put it up there. All right, the Dolphins. Who y'all got? Who got? Cause I hear both names come up. So we all got with the Dolphins. I'm not picking any of any of those guys, but I've heard that Kenyon Drake is that guy. Kenny Balaj is not. Um, what was it that I heard? Um that he was that Kenyon Drake was still getting first team reps or something like that. Uh Balaj is not. Um I'm uh I'm I'm real, if I if I'm picking up a running back, I'll go with Kenyon Drake. Um he still has R B two. Um, he's, he'll never be an RB one, I don't think, but he has RB two potential, um, and that he'll be. But I'm staying away from that offense for the most part in general. Yeah, I'm going with Kenyon Drake also, man. Just based off of you know the little success he was able to get last year. Now um, he he was um, now he he gets um, you know more of a workload and more I think he's gonna get a lot of production um with the um with the Dolphins and their new coaching staff. So um I, I expect Kenyon Drake to get more involved. Balaj I think he'll still get um uh, you know, he'll be involved with the offense but not just as much as Kenyon Drake. So I'm going with Drake. Okay. okay. I, I actually think it's gonna be a, a time there with that right down the middle. But I would go with Kenyon Drake just because I think he's more big play. If somebody's going to break one, an 80 yarder, it'll be Kenyon Drake. I think Kenyon Drake will also catch more balls in the back here. I do think he's going to be be split as far as who runs the football. Um, they'll get more about committing. So I'm with you guys. All right. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is the one that I'm hearing the most rumbles about as far as besides the Patriots one. Yeah. No, no. No confidence in Peyton Barber. Ronald Jones is a starter right now, but I'm not – I don't know anything about his hands. I don't know anything about Ronald, Ronald Jones' hands. Um, and I – and in that case, there's a uh, there's a third running back um, that, I, that I was hearing about. Looking for his name right now. Um, I don't know if you guys know it. There's that's, It's the third running back on their, on their depth chart, though. Um, Bruce Anderson. Bruce Anderson, I heard, is an excellent, excellent pass catcher, and he could easily take the role if Ronald Jones doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't look right. Um, he's the he's the he's the mold of what Bruce Arians like that that uh um, that Andre Ellington, Alfred Morris um, type running back, um, his versatile, able to pass catch and uh, and, and fill all three roles. Uh, for for running back blocking, running and and passing, uh, Bruce Anderson might be the guy to to, to stash away. Um, I'm not uh, I'm not as confident as I was in Ronald Jones uh, last year. Man, I'm rolling Ronald Jones, man. Um, he's shown that on the field. Um, um, I don't I don't know much. About uh, I don't know. I've seen what Peyton Barber could do, and I'm just not convinced, man. And come on now, it's USC, man. So I'm definitely going to Exactly. Call it like it is. Oh, Trojans, baby. 
Uh, um, obviously, both of these guys are USC fans, and we already know that. That's why she did not have a fight on. Um, but, 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 I'm not drafting any of these guys unless like the end of the draft. But if I'm gonna draft the one, God, I don't even know. I'm gonna say Peyton Barber just because I like Peyton Barber. I think Peyton Barber was more talented at Auburn than Ronald Jones was at USC. And I don't care what these guys say. Peyton Barber can play ball. I just don't know what it is with this, this offense. It just doesn't work out for whatever reason. I don't like either guy, though. But what I'm sure take over the room instead of them being switched back to one of their both young guys. Let's see which one of them can win this job and actually be a starting running back. Because that, that the division that they're in, they should be able to run the football against the Saints. They should be able to run the football against the Falcons. And the Panthers are getting up there in age, so you should be able to run the football against them. If they can't do it this year, I'll never trust either one of them. So, but for me, I would take Peyton Barber just that's off a preference. All right, guys. We're going to wrap it up with this one. The, the, the uh, Washington Redskins. Boy. That one, I don't even have an answer for because I have, I don't, I'm going to be honest. I haven't even looked at them, but they're, they're, they're guys, uh, Adrian Peterson. I haven't watched them in preseason. I haven't paid attention to rumors or anything. I'll say Adrian Peterson because he's, uh, I mean, he, he looked great last year. He's probably staying in shape. I guess he still needs his job and he's, he's, uh, he's been working hard to, to, uh, to, stay in shape and I mean he did it last year didn't expect it and uh, I'll, I'll expect him to continue his performance but I have no shares in any single Redskins Redskins player I don't want a single one of them none of them absolutely not that's just terrible um, that's, a, that's a terrible squad and uh, I, I don't want any of their players <laughs> oh man thank you um, I'm definitely not rolling with Darius Geis in this one. Um, just based off of coming off from a, a ACL injury, I think that's going to be hard to overcome. Um, I'm going with the safe pick, man. I don't like it, and I think he could be a huge steal in draft. But I would go with Adrian Peterson. Um, he so he showed that you know he showed that he still got it. In the preseason, obviously, we've seen what he was able to do in the regular season, which able was able to give them a, a new contract. So, um, I like Adrian Peterson in this one. I think that's the safe pick. Am I confident about it? No, but um, I'm rolling with AP in this one. Okay. Okay. I totally disagree with that. Oh, my God. There is no way on God's being us. I'm dropping Adrian Peterson this year. Oh, I did drop him last year. He had a pretty good year. Adrian Peterson does not catch the ball at the backfield at all. At all. Like, he's a just straight running back. And they lost Trent Williams. He's not even playing. Like, like your best offensive line, and you lost him. And now you expect your Adrian Peterson to be good? Not at all. I'm going to draft Darius Guys because at least we can trade him, hopefully. Um, somebody will like him enough to trade for him. I'm not saying that I think Darius Guys will be good, but I think he has more tradable. So, he can, you can trade him. You can trade him. I don't know if you can trade him. But I wouldn't take Adrian Peterson to look at him. But I will tell y'all, I think Bryce Love can come into play here. He's somebody I'd probably, I'd probably draft and stash away for a little while and see him the back end if it works out. But I like Bryce Love. And um, there is guys I would draft. I wouldn't draft Adrian Peterson. All right, guys. So the fantasy football question of the day today on the start of Seven show is one that me and Kiel talked about last week. Who is going to be the better fantasy wide receiver this year? DeAndre Hopkins or Julio Jones? I'm going to say Julio Jones. That's who I'm taking. That's who my number one is. Um, 
DeAndre Hopkins has been extremely consistent, the most consistent fantasy wide receiver out there. Um, but I think Julio always has that bigger upside. Uh, being in more of a pass, uh, pass-heavy offense, um, they're, they're not as balanced. Um, I'm a, I, I like Julio better, um, and that's why that's who I'll be that's who I'll be rolling with um, as my number one wide receiver. Yeah, I'm going with DeAndre Hopkins in this one. Um, um, I don't like the Falcons' offense this season. Julio Jones, as as you were able to see last season, he it was hard for him to get into the end zone. He finally got into the end zone towards the end of the season or the middle of the season. And Hopkins, man, he's just um, one of the top receivers in the game. Consistent, great hands, one of the best route runners out there. And his fantasy numbers, they are just consistent every single year. And he had a touchdown reception yesterday in the preseason game. So I'm going with DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, I mean, I love Julio Jones. I feel in a league. So we could have kept, we could have kept two keepers. I actually had Julio Jones and DeAndre Hopkins on my team. And I kept DeAndre Hopkins in deep over Julio Jones. Um, I just think that DeAndre Hopkins is on another level, man. The offense I trust more. I think that Deshaun Watson mixed in with Duke Johnson, Lamar Miller, Will Fuller. They just got a little bit more than I trust over Julio Jones. Julio Jones is the out. He's been mixed up a few times these last couple of seasons. So I'm going with DeAndre Hopkins. All right, guys. When we come to the end of the show, and let's Kio wants to add a little special topic at the end, we can give our shout out. Kio, what you want to do? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's wrap up the show. Uh, we got time expiring right now, so uh, we're going to wrap it up. Um, I'll do the shout out. Shout out to Mike. Shout out to True. Um, and shout out to everybody that comes and supports the show. And make sure you uh, subscribe to the YouTube page. Uh, where uh, all the latest episodes are up. So uh, besides that, we'll see you guys um, Tuesday on the Nothing But the NBS show. Man, yeah, shout out to Kiel for letting me know about the, uh, about the podcast today. Thank you for letting me know. Always going to be on this show, ready for next Tuesday. Um, and I'm really ready to rock some fantasy football this year. Even though we just we run up to the running back, they actually made Dallas Thompson wise to go with that guy, so I think that's what we expected. And then draft is coming. I hope you help you out with your draft as far as running back this is just two some teams that's kinda on the borderline. Next week we'll talk more about fantasy football. Good luck with all your fantasy drafts this upcoming week. And we'll see y'all next week. This has been the start of the show. I am sure you're out.